we've already done some digging in terms of just how the NFL's franchise tag window, and what happens around the league while that window is open, will impact Trey Flowers' odds to stick in New England. If what we heard from former NFL agent and CBS sports analyst Joel Corey on the next Pats podcast is any indication, those odds aren't looking great, he's going to be the bell of the ball when it comes to young pass rushers, Corey said of this free agent class. I expect D. Ford, Frank Clark, Jadeveon, Clowney and Demarcus Lawrence to get franchised. Flowers didn't have the sack numbers that those guys did, but I don't really look at sacks as indicative of pass rush ability. He had 64 quarterback pressures during the regular season. That was tied with Frank Clark in one more than Lawrence had and five more than Clowney had, so if all these guys get franchised and you've got two coaches that know him, and sometimes familiarity brings comfort in free agency, you've got Matt Patricia and Brian Flores, who both need a pass rusher. We know New England didn't want to pay Chandler Jones, who's actually a better player. This thing, with those two teams and maybe another team, interested in Flowers, could get out of hand. This could be a guy that is really well on the open market. It didn't surprise me if he got more than that Olivier Vernon deal a couple of years ago, which was at $17 million per year. The franchise tag could be in play to keep Flowers in New England for another year, though that seems unlikely for a variety of reasons. If that's off the table, would the Patriots ever think about trying to get Flowers back on a deal nearing, or exceeding, the Vernon Pact? The Patriots weren't willing to go to those lengths to keep Jones, but they were able to trade Jones before his walk year to pick up some value beyond whatever compensatory pick they would have received for losing Jones as a free agent. Plus, while Flowers may not have the pass rush upside Jones did, one could make an argument that Flowers has been a better fit in the Patriots scheme because he can play anywhere along the defensive line and can make a real impact in both the run and pass games. Jones wasn't the run stuffer or interior rusher Flowers has proven to be, more Patriots Julian Edelman's beard hair as being auctioned for more than $3,000 How those factors impact New England's willingness to pay Flowers top dollar will be fascinating to watch. One thing's for certain, there will be other teams interested in Flowers, other teams who will likely have more money, in cap space, with which to part, the Lions, for instance, could be in play for Flower Services. The Athletics' Chris Berg told us on the next Pats podcast that a reunion between Flowers and Patricia, while far from a guarantee, would make a lot of sense. I don't think that there's any question that they'll be interested in him, Burke said. This is going to be kind of a litmus test for them. Even last week, Lions GM and ex-Pats executive Bob Quinn was talking about how they went after, the way he phrased it was, every tight end that was available last year, and sort of put a hard cap on what they were willing to spend on each guy. They didn't end up getting any of those big names and then ended up falling into Luke Wilson and Levin Toilolo. This'll be a test to see if Quinn is really willing to spend at a position where the Lions need someone. It's pretty easy to connect the dots between Trey Flowers and Matt Patricia. I think the other test is they didn't have a great pass rush last year. But they were able to sort of piece together some production from that pass rush between the guys they had there and the coverage they were able to come up with in the secondary. They picked up Romeo Okwara off waivers just before the season started, they traded for Eli Harold for a conditional 7th rounder, and those guys combined for 12.5 sacks. So do you go spend a ton of money for maybe a premier pass rusher or do you sort of try to nickel and dime it up there and let Matt Patricia do his thing? How heavily they pursue Trey Flowers will be a real indicator for what they think they need to do moving forward as an organization. Click here to download the new My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Celtics easily on your device. How were the Patriots able to limit the Rams' Todd Gurley in the Super Bowl? His teammate, CJ. Anderson shed some light on it Tuesday. Gurley led the NFL in combined rushing and receiving TDs in 2018, with 21, yet his usage in the NFC Championship game and Super Bowl was curious. If he was truly healthy, Gurley had 10 carries in the 13-3 loss to the Patriots after having just 4 in the NFC title win over the Saints. 
Rams coach Sean McVay had said, knee inflammation, had slowed Gurley after he was injured deck. 16 against the Eagles and Gurley and the team insisted he was healthy for the postseason. Gurley's teammate, CJ. Anderson, whom the Rams signed to back up Gurley before Week 16, told FS1's undisputed of his teammate, he was more hurt than what we thought, Anderson said. The injury was a little bit more than what everybody in the building thought, including himself, New England, slowed down a lot of our big plays and it was frustrating, at CJ Anderson B22 on Super Bowl. LIII picked out twitter.com slash ego one gway 3 d undisputed, at undisputed, February 19, 2019, yeah, he'd never really tell me, said Anderson, who added Gurley never was specific about the injury but indicated it was a sprained knee. It was tough. I would say sprained knee. Obviously, I had surgery on my meniscus and once you have a knee, you always have a knee. So it aggravates and if he was getting a lot of touches earlier in the year, obviously him being one of the best backs, that probably was the case, click here to download the new My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Celtics easily on your device. New England Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski still hasn't announced if he will retire or return for a 10th NFL season, but could he be leaning toward coming back? Grankowski's agent, Drew Rosenhaus, said Tuesday on ESPN show, NFL Live that the Patriots star's decision on his future could come within the next few weeks. NFL Media's Mike Giardi provided another tidbit of information on Grankowski's future with a tweet Tuesday. Grankowski told multiple teammates, associates that he wanted to win another ring in the first few days following the Super Bowl. For what it's worth, emotion talking? If true, who could blame him? Gronk endured a difficult 2018 campaign, one that included a dip in performance, inconsistency and three missed games due to injuries. The 29-year-old star did play better in the playoffs, however, and he made one of the most important plays of New England's Super Bowl 53 victory against the Los Angeles Rams. If the Patriots want Grankowski back, it would make sense for him to return for another season if he feels he can withstand the physical toll of 16-plus games, including the playoffs. The Patriots, barring major injuries to key players, figure to be among the top contenders for the Super Bowl again next season. A healthy Grank would give New England a strong chance to become the first team since the Buffalo Bills in the 1990s to reach the Super Bowl four years in a row. Click here to download the new My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Celtics easily on your device.